Hello and welcome to a rather windy orchard somewhere in Somerset. Why on earth have I come here? What has this got to do with electric vehicles and the transition to clean energy? Have a look at this. This is a 100% electric paramotor and it's currently flying someone right around the UK. And we're going to find out all about why that is and what's going on and how it works. So that is an electric paramotor and this is fully charged. So Satya, last time I spoke to you, you were talking about flying around the United Kingdom in an electric powered para paramotor. paramotor. <laughs> and, and then you were talking, we were talking about electric vehicles that could be the support vehicles and all that stuff. It's all, you've done it. I mean, it is, I'm really blown away. I am really, really impressed. So yeah. that, so the, what, what is the reason that you're flying around, well, the Round Britain Climate Challenge? The reason is, well, it's the year where UK is hosting COP26. I was asked to be an ambassador for a public engagement element of it called Countersin and realised that if I'm going to be starting to ask people to do, uh, to take their own action on reducing their carbon footprint, I really needed to show um, some skin in the game. And, and uh, looking back at my last expedition, um, clearly the, uh, I fly normally a petrol powered paramotor and I have four or five diesel or petrol powered engines. Um, and so I would need to first look at that before I could do any campaigning and get trying to rally the public to do things. So what's the longest journey that I can do um, in the UK? And it was a circumnavigation of the country. Right. So if I'm doing a circumnavigation of the country, uh, doing reasonably short stops, what you can do with an electric, with a, with a battery, um, it's a perfect opportunity to stop and talk to people around the right. country about their views on climate change, uh, how they might have experienced it, but more importantly, the solutions. You've come from Glasgow to here. So for people outside the UK who don't know the map very well, that's quite a long way. It's already quite a long done. way. It's quite a small percentage of the whole coast <laughs> that I haven't worked it out yet. And yeah. I'm trying to not think about it. So when you're up in the air, you've effectively got a seat to sit in. Yes, it doesn't of. look like that for now. No. So now it's a backpack. Um, but the wing is attached to here and here. Right, so that's where the, when you get the up big in the wing air. is it, right. Yeah, these arms pull up and the seat then will comes out, I see. pull forward and scoop you up. Right, so when, when you're it, actually in the air, you're kind of in a sitting position, yeah, controlling it from there. Yeah, you're just sitting. Um, got quite, it's quite roomy actually with two, the lines coming up here and holding the, so then the, so the, the brakes. So at the moment, all the weight is on your shoulders, but once you're flying, presumably yeah. that isn't the case, then you're as supported by the As soon as the, the wing seat. gets up in the air, it takes it pulls all that some weight of the off weight off. Right. And then when you're airborne, it takes it all. Right, right. Take off and, take off and landings <laughs> are the challenging bit. In air, the craft is actually pretty competent right. and it will look after you. Just so we know, yep. when you've got a petrol-powered yep. paraglider motor, d how long can you fly with one of those? I mean, how, I, how I, with a motor of a similar size, could fly with a 16-litre tank for at least four hours. With a 12-litre right. tank, maybe three and a bit hours. Right. So, so a long, a yeah, long, a long time, time to be. A long time. Yeah. So this is. Less. This is less, yes. <laughs> With an 18 kilo battery, lithium battery, I can fly for 35 minutes. Right. So, I mean, an interesting thought, because you know, there's been a lot of discussion about how quiet electric vehicles are, but when you're in the air, is, it any, is there any difference in noise? Because presumably 90% yeah. of the noise is the actual propeller rather I'd than the... I'd say it's more like 50. Oh, and right. if you're on the ground, it's a much higher pitch noise. So I have flown over places where people have said, oh, we've had paramotors flying over before, but they're normally really noisy. And I can say that's because it's electric. Ah, so it is quieter then when It is flying. quieter, no. but I think it's more noticeable. In the air, I would still, you know, I still can't pick up the phone and have an ordinary call. I right. can through my headset because there's noise cancelling in it. So yeah. I couldn't do that, but I, um, you certainly, yeah, it's certainly quieter. But the biggest difference is for people, anyone on the ground, because it's a higher pitch noise, it doesn't, it doesn't travel, travel far. so far, yeah. Right. So the screen, there's a bit of blue reflection on it, yeah, so it's I not can, ideal. I can just about see it. In the yeah, right can, you can imagine in flight yes. with strong sunlight, this <laughs> is a bit of a challenge. Very so I get the voltage and the current and the capacity of the battery, which is 100%. Right. 
what I had to learn was though that it will assume whatever is in the battery is 100%. Right. So I have to check beforehand that it's oh, full I see. and so not half. Oh, even if it wasn't 100%, it would it say would it was. It would still say 100 there, just then would give me a warning <laughs> and it would go down very rapidly. Right. Um, and so then I just um, flick through the different screens. So that will tell me the battery temperature and that's really what I've got to watch. Right. So that's at 19 degrees. It can't recharge it until it's dropped down to 25 degrees. Right. And in flight, I can't let it get over 100 degrees because then it's the motor out. cuts. Because I mean, I would have thought that when you're flying, there's a lot of cool air potentially cooling yeah. the batteries, but maybe they're protected, but like they're kind of protected by you, aren't they? You're and the, the temperature builds wind. up because you are using it at such high, I'm not going to use the right words now, but the battery is working at like it's, the it's, maximum It's giving potential, a lot of power out. Yeah. And that's why the heat builds up so quickly. Yeah. I think for me, it's, the whole thing has been a bit of a metaphor for how I'd like to see us focusing on, on climate change and the challenges. I know it's like a, it's a simple and adventurous and quite an out sure. there metaphor, but the idea that we, you know, we are going to have to like make some big ambitions, not know exactly how we're going to get there, yeah. not be too scared to fail, and bank on other people like stepping up to, to yeah. help, and yeah. that's kind of what I've seen so far. I've just got one other question about the battery. So when yep. you, you've landed, yep. turn the motor off, how long does it take then to, because presumably then one of the batteries is charging in the van while they're following you. Is that the Yeah, it can't routine? charge from the van, but right. the, the van, we've got a bank of, of five like slots where the spare right. batteries sit. So we've got six batteries in total. We've now found two of them do not work. Oh, that's <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of them really doesn't work. The other one uh, at 50% suddenly gives you alarms and stops. Oh God and um, it's a bit unreliable so I've just decided I'm flying through now I might be okay in this sort of flatter farmland but yeah. when I was in challenging terrain I just could not cope with that as another worry. No. So I've got four batteries that, that work and uh, the, yeah, the paramotor wasn't designed for long distance expeditions so the battery changes have been a challenge right. um, but with this I can just remove the top half of the frame, unplug the, uh, the cables at the bottom, remove a bit of fairing at the top and then this slides it out. Slides out. Yeah. Um, I have had to slightly modify that because they weren't sliding out. It was the fit was all so tight right. that I've had to get in with a file. I did check with the engineer whether it was okay, right. but get oh in with Lord. a file and create a bit more space because the right. rivets in the batteries at the bottom were just catching. Right. So yeah, there's just constant. So it's. I mean, the thing is, it's extremely early. It's yeah. a very early version of it because presumably they, it wouldn't be that hard if there was a market for them to engineer something where literally you pressed a button and the battery slid out and you slid another one in you know there, there's other yes but I can't around. imagine most people I think the most likely people to buy it en masse would be those that want a joy flight along the beach or get up and take a few pictures in yeah. which case they'd have a battery that was half the size and they just they did a yeah. 15 maybe yeah. 17 18 minute flight and would land again and then it's much lighter to yeah. walk around with on yeah. the ground so so like you've pushed basically you've pushed the, it to the absolute limit of what we can do with that, that yes. technology at yes. the moment also partly in hope that a few people will watch and go, we think we can do yes. a battery with higher capacity. I mean, the inventor was saying himself, there haven't been many great uh, advances in the last few years, but right. fingers crossed there will be, so we'd get more power uh, with less weight. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping that there will be part of my struggles uh, and suffering online will lead to people saying they've, um, they've got new ideas. Yeah. Sacha, I'm so impressed. I'm blown away by it. I want, I mean, I'm really hoping our, our viewers will follow you and follow your progress. So you're basically, we'll see you again in Glasgow. Yeah. Well, you're going right the way around the country yes. and ending back up in Glasgow yes. in, ready yep. for COP26, which is that's, extraordinary. That's so. it. And uh, yeah, what, what I'm really hoping is that we will use the expedition to highlight some of the people we meet along the yeah. way as well. And with all of those people, I'm asking them, what could Joe Blogs do? What could an investor do if they see your idea, your project yeah. um, and get inspired? And hopefully at the end of it, we'll also have a lot of people saying, ah, oh, so-and-so saw it and they offered their support. Um, that's what I'm really hoping that will inspire, that those people will inspire others to step in and, and help as well. Yeah. But yeah, and we'll have some amazing stories to share at COP. So can you make it spin up now? Because I've just got no idea quite how that, is it, is it all right to do that at the moment? Yeah, it is. Um, There's no one behind no you. No one behind me no. or to the side. Okay, so yeah, to turn it on, I basically, uh, unlike a petrol motor, I don't have to pull start it, which is oh, nice. Right, which you would have had to do. So could, can you do that from when you've got a petrol on? And is that, you, yeah. You can do that from when it's on your back. You yeah. can start it up, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In fact, you only start it when it's on your back. Right. So that way you can't end up with a hand going into the propeller. Yes. 
Um, so that's it, that's on now. So, right. um, because it doesn't, make, it doesn't make any noise, you wouldn't know. So that's something I've had to learn to be yeah. double check all the time that the motor's actually off. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. You can start it up whenever okay. you like. All right, you give, it, give it, it a spin like? up, let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> So at that that's point it. then you were just leaning back it so that's yeah. pushing you. Yes, I didn't go to the full because no. it was going even further but yeah that's But you so you could kind of lean back. Oh, I don't want you to do it but you you are actually leaning against it quite yes. a lot then. Aren't yes. Uh, wow. Let's have another go for you. The other thing with the propeller is that there is some torque so it actually the it's whole twisting you as well. Is it? Slightly, right. So you kind of have to counter that. Yeah. Let me just change screens to make sure it definitely doesn't get to yeah. 100 degrees. Yeah, okay, I've got it now. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Wow. Thank you so much. And I just want to say what an amazing thing. Please do for all the links to what Sacha is doing will be in the show notes beneath this episode. And uh, it's been a great joy to see you and an amazing bit of kit. I mean, it's terror. It's terrifying. It's a mi proper mixture of terrifying and Im really impressive. I'm, I'm just blown away by it. But anyway, uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Have a look at the Patreon link. Have a look at all the links. There's going to be link rich beneath this episode. And uh, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.